Hello, I'm Hamish Maxwell, an investment specialist with Scottish Mortgage. Thank you for watching this update to the third quarter of 2024. I'll bring you up to speed on how we've been navigating choppy markets, a bit about positioning, including our China and private companies exposure, and some repositioning, and I'll end on return drivers and upside potential. Our purpose at Scottish Mortgage is simple, to maximise total returns over the long term. To do that, we aim to own the world's most exceptional public and private growth companies. The businesses we want to own address large and growing opportunities, they have strong competitive advantages, and they're disrupting their industries or even creating new ones. Many are founder-led and have a cultural advantage too. Exceptional businesses don't change industries or create new ones overnight. It takes five to 10 years or more, and it will involve mistakes along the way. And that's why our end of the bargain, when we find the best growth companies, is to be patient and supportive shareholders. Investors have been navigating a complex market backdrop with the market focused on a number of short-term uncertainties, notably the interest rate environment and political and geopolitical risk from the US election to armed conflict and tension over Taiwan. However, as my colleague Claire Shaw mentioned last time, what matters more to us are the long-term structural trends driving growth in the global economy. Mega forces like AI, the energy transition, the digitization of the economy, and advances in healthcare. Growth doesn't move in a straight line, but these transformational forces are creating massive investment in the economy with enormous upside potential, and we find that really exciting. Our China exposure is a little over 10% of the portfolio. It's come down in recent years as regulatory and geopolitical risks have increased. It's perhaps typical of China's market volatility that in the last quarter alone, we saw a rapid rise in the market after signs of monetary stimulus from the Chinese government, then a decline when the fiscal detail seems somewhat limited. But our focus is on the few companies in China that continue to drive growth and grow their businesses, regardless of market sentiment. Companies like electric vehicle maker BYD, online, online content company ByteDance, and e-commerce leaders Meituan and PDD. We think these companies offer attractive returns potential. And during the recent anti-China sentiment, which has weighed on share prices, these companies have shown lots of operational progress. BYD made 3 million electric vehicles in 2023, Matron recently delivered more meals in one day than there are people in the UK. And PDD has generated rapid growth in China and overseas, which is a combination that many companies have tried but failed. Our view is that China is a place for stock pickers. And though our allocation has come down, we are excited by what a few companies can offer. Portfolio turnover remains low and is in line with our five to 10 year horizon but we have been busy with research and engagement. This year alone, we've had dozens of meetings with company management and lots of written research alongside it. This has led to some recycling of capital. We reduced our holding in chip designer NVIDIA. Given the amazing progress it's made with artificial intelligence, it's become one of the world's largest companies. But as we look out over the next five to 10 years, there's a bit more of a symmetric returns potential for NVIDIA than the asymmetry we look for. We still think AI will have huge application, but to do so, it will have to be low cost. So what does that mean for NVIDIA's rapid revenue growth? We also reduced ASML, the leading lithography equipment maker used to produce semiconductors. It's got a monopoly in the latest extreme ultraviolet technology, but as the industry is evolving, we've redeployed some capital into leading semiconductor foundry, TSMC, whose competitive position has improved recently. If you're interested in learning more about these companies and the semiconductor industry, please see our website uh, and the interview we had with Chris Miller, the author of Chip War. We completely sold our position in Veer Biotech, which works to treat and prevent serious infectious diseases. After a pivot by Veer shows perhaps less confidence in its insights and drug pipeline. We also sold Clear Secure, the biometric identity company which helps customers save time at airports, simply as we found more attractive growth elsewhere. And we have been finding new and interesting ideas. We bought Newbank, Latin America's leading digital bank, indeed the largest digital bank outside of China. 
Nubank is working to help hundreds of millions of people uh, to access banking in the region. We took a new holding in Hamez, the French luxury goods company that's finding new markets for its ultra high-end products. A 180-year-old company may not seem like an obvious Scottish mortgage purchase, but the market often fails to recognise the power of compounding. Hermes brand allure and pricing power shows no sign of abating, and there's room for its exceptional quality goods in new markets. We also bought BYD, China's leading electric vehicle maker. BYD is one of the reasons that China has come to dominate this new and growing EV industry, thanks to its vertical integration and the virtual cycle of cost and scale. After decades of science fiction, artificial intelligence is finally here and it is changing the world. Innovation drives profits and the rise of AI has been a primary contributor to market performance recently. Phase one has been the hardware that makes AI possible. It's the microchips and it's the semiconductors. And at the heart of this supply chain, you find our holdings Nvidia, TSMC and ASML. As a threesome, they each do something unique and vital. NVIDIA designs the best chips for AI, TSMC makes the chips for companies like NVIDIA, and it does so using ASML's machinery. Next in the supply chain is infrastructure, companies using chips to create huge AI models. These include cloud providers, network infrastructure, data analytics, and software security. Scottish Mortgage has a range of investments in this phase, including Amazon, Meta, Snowflake, Databricks, and Cloudflare. Then we have the companies incorporating AI into their business model to grow revenue and improve productivity. In our portfolio, examples include Adyen, using AI to detect payment fraud in real time. Acado, using it to control its robot hives for food delivery. And Matron, using AI to personalize recommendations and optimize delivery routes. Coming back to what we're trying to do for investors. The long-term returns for Scottish Mortgage have been strong and driven by a few big winners. Inevitably, we experience some loss in individual holdings. Recently, Northvolt, one of our private companies in the battery industry, has experienced lower than expected demand, meaning it has to consolidate its finances and operations. And Moderna, the biotech company, is experiencing lower revenue in this period between its enormous COVID vaccine success and the future rollout of its newer pipeline, such as RSV and cancer vaccines. But in both of these cases, the upside could still be profound. So we are engaging with management and monitoring the situation. However, the maximum you can lose in one company is the original investment, but the returns from the biggest winners can be unlimited. This asymmetry is what's been crucial to our good long-term returns. For instance, NVIDIA, which we bought in 2016, has returned 85 times our original investment. Tesla, bought in 2013, has returned 18 times, and ASML and Ferrari have returned 10 times each. But what about extreme returns from here? It comes back to my remarks about structural changes in the economy. AI, energy, health, logistics, digitization. We believe our holdings are driving this sort of valuable change. So, notwithstanding near-term macro volatility, we are excited about the potential of Scottish Mortgage to deliver extreme long-term returns. Thanks for watching.